A summer adventure to Spain and Italy is, no doubt, a trip of a lifetime. The sights, the scenes, and the history speak of ancient civilizations in the Mediterranean that we draw much from today. As an ambassador of the world, I wanted to bring back ideas from what I've experienced and make a difference in our country from what I learned. It was evident on day one that health would be my theme. The Mediterranean diet has long been known as one of the healthiest diets in the world. There's many beautiful selections of fruits and vegetables, and who would have thought that there were over 15 different types of olives? Here on this tour, I learned much that will benefit our population in the USA when it comes to their diet and the selection that they make for their nutrition. So come along with me and let's explore together what I learned from the ancients to improve our health in a modern world. The three staples of the Mediterranean diet include the olive, the grape, and wheat. Archaeologist Colin Renfrew calls these staples the Mediterranean tried. They make up the core elements of the daily diet consumed by the ancients in the Mediterranean region. The olive yields oil, wheat yields bread, and grapes yielded the wine. So what makes the Mediterranean diet unique? What can we derive from the ancients in this region to improve health in our diets today? You may be surprised by what you learn. The history of the olive takes us back to ancient Greece. Olive oil was a common staple and possessed a somewhat divine quality about it. To the Greeks, olives were not only considered as a health product, but something that had an essence and divine power embedded in it. The olive tree was a particularly important symbol for the ancient Greeks. It was highly revered. It was connected to her diet and the religion and used as a decorative motif on vases and gold jewelry and elsewhere. It was considered a symbol of peace, wisdom, and victory. That is why the winners of the Olympic Games were crowned with a wreath of wild olive. Ancient Greeks used olives as their main source of fat instead of animal fat because they thought it was unhealthy since the barbarians ate that way. Originally, the olive came from the region of Persia and Mesopotamia, but it spread from there to nearby areas throughout the Mediterranean region since about 3150 BC. Olive oil has long been the most important ingredient in the Mediterranean diet. It is an age-old health product. In recent years, people from around the world have gained an increasing awareness of its benefits, and sales in the United States, as well as Asia, have been increasing dramatically. Even the World Health Organization officially recommends that people across the world adopt the Mediterranean diet for better health, specifically suggesting olive oil as the healthiest source of fat on the planet. Studies today show that an olive oil diet reduces the risk of type 2 diabetes. This is significant as diabetes has become a huge health concern in America. Some studies even show that diets rich in fresh olive oil may prevent strokes and even fight osteoporosis. Other practical uses in the ancient world include to bathe a newborn and soothe the new mother as a morning beverage, drinking one spoonful of olive oil every morning can soothe the stomach and swishing it in the mouth for a few minutes can improve dental health, to nourish hair as a natural cleanser and makeup remover, ancient Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans had no soap. Olive oil can serve as a face wash and eye makeup remover, as a skin moisturizer for hands, body, and feet working better than most lotions. Olive oil can even be used to polish furniture to clean and shine wood. It can clean and waterproof leather coats, boots, belts, etc. Olive oil can also be used to shine brass utensil and silverware. It can even be used as a bath oil, leaving skin silky and fresh. The grape was domesticated between 7000 and 4000 BC between the Black Sea and Persia. Archaeological evidence shows that wine was being made there by 6000 BC, reaching Greece and Crete in the 5th millennium BC and Spain by the last millennium BC. Winemaking started in Italy in the 9th century BC and in Spain around 550 BC. 
Grapes are mostly grown for making wine and vinegar as basic components of the Mediterranean diet, as well for drying as raisins or for eating as table grapes. Raisin and table grape varieties are chosen for their flavor. Grapes have several chemical compositions that are being studied for their health benefits. They include natural phenols and polyphenols, resveratrol, and anthocyanins. Natural phenols and polyphenols in grapes have been shown to have a lot of antioxidant activity beneficial for health. Grape skins and leaves of the grapevines have proven health benefits as well. Resveratrol is a stilbenoid phenolic compound found in wine produced in the grape skin and leaves of grapevines. Grapes like Pinot Noir grown in cool climates such as Oregon and Burgundy tend to have higher concentrations of resveratrol than grapes grown in warmer regions like California and Australia. The prominence of resveratrol in the news and its association with positive health benefits has encouraged some wineries to highlight it in their marketing. Red grapes are high in anthocyanins, which are the source of the color of various fruits. The darker the red wine, the more health benefits are present. Wheat was domesticated in the Fertile Crescent, in and near the Levant. It has been spread across the Mediterranean region as far as Spain by 5000 BC. Wheat is a staple food in the Mediterranean region. Wheat bread was already critically important in the empire of ancient Rome, which included the entire region at that time, around 2000 years ago. North Africa was the breadbasket of the empire. Other staple wheat-based Mediterranean foods include pasta, semolina, kushkush, and bulgur. Another very important healthy practice I discovered on my trip to Spain and Italy was the use of public Roman baths known as the thermae. During the Roman Empire, bathhouses flourished. The city of Rome had 170 baths during the reign of Augustus in 30 AD, which increased in number to 900 baths by 300 AD. Some baths were large scale while others were small. The largest of these, the Bath of Diocletian, could hold up to 3,000 bathers, while some advertised both fresh and salt water baths. Fees for bathers were quite reasonable, well within the budget of most free Roman males. Sorry kids. Children were not permitted. After a morning's work, most Romans enjoyed spending the afternoon at the thermae or public bath. The bath served several purposes. First, they served the medicinal purpose to cure ailments. Scientific studies have revealed over 40 different minerals in the water, surprisingly including a slightly radioactive background reading. The word spa is an acronym for the Latin phrase that means health through water. Soaking in high concentrated mineral water heats up your body temperature, killing harmful germs and viruses, eliminating toxins, increases blood flow and circulation, increasing metabolism and absorption of essential minerals. Some of these minerals include selenium, which is a powerful antioxidant, magnesium, which converts blood sugar to energy and promotes skin health, and potassium, which assists reducing high blood pressure. These minerals rejuvenate the bathers and help with some sore muscles and overall health. Secondly, baths served as a social gathering location where people could relax and enjoy social visits with those they know. Baths were a social meeting place. Men and women enjoyed coming to the baths not only to get clean, but to meet with friends, exercise, or read at the library. The baths had hot and cold pools, towels, steam rooms, saunas, exercise rooms, and even hair cutting salons. In some ways, thermae or Roman baths resemble our modern day spas. The Roman raised bathing to a high art as they socialized in these communal baths. Courtship was conducted as well as sealing business deals as they built lavishing baths on natural hot springs. My time spent in Spain and Italy was rich with history, language, and culture. Little did I know what I would learn from the ancient Mediterranean world that I could use for better health today. This is a message that needs to be told. Countless people in the US are looking for healthier lifestyles through what they eat and life choices they make. Recent statistics show that 65% of US adults are overweight or obese. The top four causes of death in the US 
are heart disease, cancer, stroke, and lung disease. Studies show that even subtle changes in diet over periods of time can make a positive impact in experiencing better health and longevity. So what can we do to improve our daily diet? What can we do to make our lives healthier? What can we do to make our lives longer? One of my big takeaways from the Spain and Italy trip was observing how people were consuming fresh fruits, vegetables, and whole grains every day. Their focus on convenient fast food is much more minimized than what we know in the United States. And it has made a recognizable difference in their lives and it is noticed throughout the world. The same may be said about daily exercise and use of water hydrotherapy. While I was visiting Warm Springs, Georgia, I saw a modern day example of where our 32 second president, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, would frequently visit to help with the pain and the discomfort from his polio. At Warm Springs, while he soaked in the therapeutic waters, he found a strength to resume his political career and a positive outlet for his own personal physical struggles. It was said that President Roosevelt returned to the waters at Warm Springs every year except one until his death there in 1945. The ancient Mediterranean world came near as this was a modern day example of how baths improved health and vitality. As an ambassador to the world, I think this message of ancient health for our modern world is vital for me to share to as many who receive it. New is not always better. We can learn much from the Mediterranean region that is still practiced throughout Spain and Italy today. Although it's not a new message, it is one that I saw firsthand where a culture and history collide together over several millennia to produce good health.